So this is a sample of the pie chart we're going to recreate. It's the breakdown of the federal U.S. spending by category, uh, 2.45 trillion. I think this is the 2015 numbers. I found it on Google. Um, but I created this chart, but I'm going to show you kind of the process I went through to create a very accurate pie chart. So with pie charts, especially when you start to get three or more different slices of the pie, it starts to get harder to guess what does a 48% of the pie look like, what does a 5% of the pie look like. You really want to be accurate with how you're displaying your visual information. This is where the science part comes into infographics. So you're going to need to use some kind of tool. You can actually do this in um, Excel, but Adobe Illustrator has a fantastic uh, tool for this. You're going to go down in your tools. If you don't see it listed in your toolbar, you probably don't. It's usually hidden. Uh, let's go ahead and call it up down here into the edit toolbar section. You're going to click on here. You're going to find this is, of course, the 2019 um, uh, version as this is filmed of Illustrator. And there's all sorts of different tools you can use. We're going to use the pie graph tool, which I already have it selected. And I went ahead and dragged it right into my toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and access that now. So if you haven't used any of the built-in Adobe uh, graphing and charting tools, you're in luck. So let's go ahead and select our pie graph tool. We have it selected right here, and we're going to go ahead and draw where what we think the size ought to be for our pie graph. So we're just going to go ahead and click it and drag, and it's going to be able to load it. So this is where we're going to load in the data just like you would in Excel. Uh, we're not going to do, we're going to do columns across, we're not going to do rows. And we can, you, I'll show you why you can do rows and how that can be beneficial. But for this case, we're going to do columns. And we're going to go pop into our uh, Word document and go ahead and type in our information. So we have a 4, a 5, a 38, a 48, a 2, and a 2%. And you can do this with any, we can even grab your own statistic. You don't have to do the ones that I provided. Um, so let's go ahead and type that in. I'm going to type it in by in order. So I'm going to start with the largest and go to the smallest because you don't want to put your largest pie slice next to your smallest. And then another large one, you want to kind of go in order from largest all the way down to smallest because that's the way it's going to load the pie slices. So let's start with the largest, which is uh, 48, 38. And we're going to go ahead and click on this little check mark and it's going to automatically create the pie slices for us. Awesome. Yay. That makes life so much easier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on here and it has kind of this stroke to it kind of has this little small stroke and I don't like those little thin strokes. We're going to do something different with it. So I'm just going to go select my stroke over here and just negate that and get it to none. So now I have a nice clean graph. So when we're done with this, and what's great about this is this is 100% accurate. I, I know that is a 5% slice of the pie. I can feel comfortable statistically showing that and, 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 uh, and, and being representing that. So at any time, if you want to update, Kind of the numbers if you want to add another pie slice uh, make it more complicated whatever you needed to do you can always just change that right here and it'll update it live for you um, so we can kind of make this a little bit more dynamic because right now this is kind of a boring pie chart that you would see in any kind of boring financial statement so let's spice it up just a little bit with color maybe a little bit of a 3d jazz to it um, so right now when i right click I, I have everything grayed out i have everything grayed out here i can't seem to kind of isolate it so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to close out this little box and we got to feel like we're really confident with those numbers we're kind of done tweaking the pie chart we're ready to kind of add um, kind of the slick style to it so let's go ahead and say we're done so we're clicking off of that and now we'll have um, a lot of those options are now ungrayed, and so now we can kind of ungroup this a little bit. We're going to go to Object, Ungroup, and uh, it's going to say this selection contains a graph. After the graph is ungrouped, that's it. We can't access the graph anymore, so we're just turning this into regular shape elements. We lose the graph portion. That's okay because we feel final about that. Go ahead and click on Yes. So now I have the option to take the Direct Selection tool and just kind of selecting each pie slice and using my arrow keys is kind of shifting shifting it around a little bit to isolate these pie slices from each other just so those smaller pie, uh, pie slices can be seen a little better so kind of what we did up there kind of putting our um, smaller slices a little bit higher up and gradually higher up so it kind of looks like they're slowly coming out and of course these colors definitely have to be changed and now that we've ungrouped all this, we have total control over these elements. Let's go ahead and right click. We're going to have to ungroup again. And now let's see if we have to ungroup. We've got to ungroup a couple times to kind of finally isolate these. But it should eventually give us. So now we can safely kind of tilt these a little bit 
and just kind of find the right angle for each one of these. Just creating something a little bit more special than your standard pie chart. So let's add a little pop of color here. I have lots of different color options I can add up here to kind of match um, this bright uh, jewel tone color theme we have so far here. So I'm just going to kind of borrow the ones that I've already kind of selected here and I'm just going to uh, do a slower gradient here. Just click on fill and do a nice transition with some of these. Okay, so we have blue, purple, and I'm not doing colors that are so far off from each other. They're kind of in a similar jewel tone theme and color palette. And usually starting with kind of going in order, so I kind of have uh, kind of purple to blue to green to orange, kind of, and then down to red, the, the, the darker orange is the smallest and, and kind of works its way around. So now that I have a nice thematic color palette applied to this, it needs kind of a little shimmer or shine. We could do some kind of 3D effects to it uh, just to kind of make it pop a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything now. It's no longer connected to the pie chart tool. It's its own element or combination of different symbols and elements. And we're just going to right click and we're just going to group everything together. So we're getting ready to use the 3D tool. So when we use the 3D tool, we want to group things together so it all are, they all are treated as one element. Um, so let's go ahead and go up to Effect. We're going to go down to 3D. If you ever have an experience with using 3D in Adobe Illustrator, uh, this is exactly what we're doing. We're going to be doing extruding and uh, be extrude and bevel. So let's go ahead and click on that. We always want to check on preview so we can see what the heck is happening when we're uh, kind of uh, messing with this. So here's kind of a visual representation of the angle that it's going to be doing, and we want to keep the front nice and center. We just want to apply a very small, subtle 3D effect to it. We don't want to have it spin this way, and you can't properly see the pie slices in, in their order. So we're just going to do a little bit of a change. And one of the biggest things I change, I don't change, I don't mess with a, a lot of settings in the 3D, but one I do um, mess with a lot is the extrude depth, which will be how deep it is. So if I do 200 points and press enter, it's going to be this incredibly thick um, chart where I can go back up. And if, if, if you once you close out of that and you want to go back and edit, just always go to your properties panel and you'll be able to go back and click on any properties you've applied to your subject. So if you applied a 3D, you can go back and click on this and get, get back to your settings. So let's click on preview again. And let's do, I like to do a nice skinny extrude depth because we don't want it to look fake or cheesy. So let's just do like a 10 points and see how that looks. We could test it out just a little bit, maybe kind of shift this upward to get whatever angle that you like or you think would look really good. And there's also perspective. This is perspective right here. So let's see, I don't think you can see a big change with the circle on perspective. I don't think you can. But I love using perspective because it almost gives you a, a, a kind of that unique camera lens, almost looks like there's a there's a pers like a like a fisheye type lens on it, kind of gives it a really neat um, look. But in this case with the pie graph, I don't think it's necessarily going to show up too much.